So we've progressed since the last video. As you can see, I've started to work in a few more details. Now these are all very simple, basic operations, just adding in primitives to start you off and then reworking those into the shapes you want. The belt, for example, is just a cylinder, just reworked to fit around his torso. The same with this belt in here, just like we did with the straps. Just simple shapes wrapped around his body to give us these details which we want. The same with his poncho, I've just added a bit of depth to that. Just to thicken it up and to make it more solid. And these are just cylinders tapered at the end just to give us those spikes. Same on his, uh, on his glove there. So where do we need to go next? Well, obviously, we need to start and think about his hair. If we look at the concept image, it looks almost as if something's landed on the back of his head and spread across the front with his hair hanging out in front of his face. Now, there's a couple of ways we can approach this. One way is to create a sphere like so. Let's delete the bottom. Let's just scale that to fit on top of his head. Like this, we'll just smooth that a couple of times. Smooth shade, hide the wireframe. And then we need to rotate that because the root for his hair, just like your hair, is on the back of his head and to one side, not actually on the top of his head. So again, we'll just scale that to fit. Like that. And then we'll just give it some depth. Just pull that down like so. Now there we have the starting blocks for one approach to creating his hair. And because this is the root here, we can pull that in. And we, if you notice, as I rotate around it, we've got these pinches here. And that is because we're using a, a sphere and we have triangles at this end here. And that's creating those pinches. But we can work that to our advantage by creating more cuts. Then we will just triangulate those like that. Ignore that for now. That's just the normals. Unify normals. There we go. Just flip that edge round. And then we can select every other one. Move those down. The same down here. Move those in. And what that gives us is this sort of effect, which will help enhance each strand of the hair. And once we've got that, we can then go in and say, right, let's start to build in these fancy pointy strands which come out the front of his head. Like so. Just extruding, scaling, and moving. Like that. So that's just one. And as you can see, you could then go in for each of these and pull out an extra section, pull out sections on top of sections. So pull out one of here and then build up that nice, flowy, floppy hair shape. Now, I'm not going to use this approach and that's because this is going to be a game model. And as such, we want to try and make life easier for ourselves later. And a shape like this with lots of elements pulled off, extruded, will not be fun to UV and certainly won't be fun to texture. And that's because the nature of its shape, you won't be able to get one nice uh, UV shell out of it without areas being pinched or without having to chop off an area like this so that we can unfold it properly, which then means we'll have problems trying to paint across this seam here and trying to get it to all line up. 
So thinking ahead, that approach will not work here. So we'll delete that. Instead, what we're going to do is take a simpler approach, which should, in theory, when we come to uh, do our uh, texturing and UVing, make life a lot easier. And that's to build, that's to approach it one strand at a time. Now it sounds like a lot of work, but it's not really, not compared to the sphere option. So we're just going to create one strand and just smooth that. I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees and that just gives us the edges more of a, like in more of a diamond shape. Fix the axis, we can hide that now and then we just need to mold this so it fits around his head. So extrude a couple of times out the front, the same at the back. Actually probably just one at the back and then we can scale that in and move it down to where the root of his hair is. Again, just scaling and adjusting around his head. We could switch to the side view if we wanted, get a bit more precise, scale the tip, and that's going to come around here. Just fitting it around his head. Don't be afraid to put in some more edge loops if you want. Just give his hair a bit of a curl at the end. So that's basically it. Just smooth the shade, hide the wireframe. Nope, hide the wireframe. And what we've got there is just one strand of hair. I mean, at the moment, it looks like some sort of slug that's crawling along the top of his head. So we need to now adjust it so it, so it looks a bit more stylized, a bit more hair shape. So first of all, we'll just bevel the top slightly, just to give it a little ridge across there. Then we'll hide unselected and just create a few more cuts along it. I think I just accidentally, nope. Select these. And just pinch those in, move them up slightly, just to give us a bit more detail into this shape. And there we've just, well, just done exactly that. Looks less slug-like, still looks a bit odd if we uh, bring back the rest of the model. But what we can do now is we can take this model we will move the pivot point back to the root, like so. And that will mean that we can then duplicate and rotate that. So if I open up the numerical editor, duplicate that, rotate it 180 degrees. And then we can put that at the back of his head. Again, duplicate another one rotate it minus 90 so we get it at the side of his head and then just rotate it so it fits something like that and carry on then we duplicate it uh, rotate it minus 22.5 and so on and so on and then when you've got one side of his hair done duplicate and uh, mirror it across to create the other side now that will leave you with a hairstyle that's quite flat and uniform and boring. But what you should do then is just go on and when you've got all your individual strands, just go in and one at a time, adjust the shape to make it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more random and, uh, and wild. Now I'm not gonna do that just now. I'll leave you to do that. Just duplicate those uh, separate strands until you've got a full head of hair so what do we need to look at next? Well, we need to start thinking about adding in 
more details into the rest of the body. So as an example, the belt's looking quite flat at the moment. What we can do relatively quickly is just create a bevel in the middle, extrude that out, and then bevel those edges just to harden them. Again, like I said before, we could crease them, but then the creases won't follow us when we move into Maya. So I prefer to use bevels to harden edges that I need. Uh, open up our material editor, just apply that belt color back to him. You can see I've been quite lazy and I haven't named my materials. Now, you should really name them, just in case somebody else comes along, edits the file, and uh, needs to have a look at them. And do, I mean, it's obvious which colour is which, but these two colours are quite similar, so you don't really know what's what. So I'll probably come back to this file and rename them all uh, before you start working with them. But, back on track, that's just added this extra ridge to the belt. It's just a little bit more detail. You could go in and maybe add another one down the middle, which is inverted, so it cuts out of the model rather than uh, extrudes. And it's quick things like that which are just going to help improve the look of the model. The same with the boots. We could go in and just create a couple more edge, cut, uh, edge loops around here. Now this is just a quick example. You know, just pull those up and forwards and we've got creases on the front of his boots. Again, just adding a bit more detail. And we could copy those up to here and add creases around uh, the ankle joint here where you'd naturally get creases in the leather. We could follow that up to his clothing here. We need some creases creating around here and around here just to break up this flat element, this flat surface. So again, we could just, and you'll take more care over this than I am at the moment, but just add in a cut pull the geometry around and you've got a slight crease. Now again it just breaks up that long flat surface. We could add more in under here and under here and we certainly need to add in more on his bandana. Again I'm just adding in lots more edge loops and then we can pull those around just taking a bit more care and if we look at that we've just added a quick crease in there which will come through in the normal map very nicely and that's something you also need to consider how much detail do I put in now compared with how much detail I can add into the normal map later and by add in what I mean is this model we have here will give us all these nice this nice uh, soft surface detail like the area here under his armpit that will look nice in the normal map and it will soften the game model. These creases here these will come through nicely in our main base normal map and that's all this will give us a base normal map. What we can do then is work on top of it adding in more details and we could take it into an application like 3D Coat and physically paint more normal map detail straight onto the model and that will allow us to go in and paint in finer creases and bits of detail which would we could do in this but it would take a long time and the topology would start to get messy and you'd end up with pinches and creases uh, which don't look natural and don't look very nice so what I would suggest is just go through building all the main creases, the large areas, like so, and getting all your main details now before you're ready to move on. So what I'll do is I'm just going to quickly load in a model that I've worked a bit more on so you can see how the hair has worked out and some of the other areas that I've uh, added to. Right, here we, here we go. Here's where uh, the model is now. As you can see, the hair is looking much better. I've gone in and 
made it a bit more random, adjusted the strands, and even if we look from the top, I've given it a bit of a wave, and that was just by selecting the hair, select the vertices. If I just select it like so, just as an example. So select the vertices around the middle, which it won't let me do. Okay, well, you get the idea with that. Select the vertices around the middle and then just rotate them, which gives us this nice wave here. Again, it breaks up the hair and makes it a little less flat and boring. I've added in some basic eyes. Now, I wasn't sure how to approach the eyes, but looking at the concept image, it's quite a simple um, concept. So I opted for simple eyes. These may change later. I'm not entirely sure, but we'll see how the model pans out. Again, I added in that ridge on the belt. We've built a basic buckle and I've added in some creases. And again, just some surface details like these laces, which won't be actually, won't be a physical model in the game model, but they're there because we'll be able to use them in the form of the normal map. When we come to project these down onto the base game model, these de details will come through nicely onto the boots. And again, more main creases around his clothing. And I've also built a knot, a basic knot, at the back of his bandana. Now these, these are just here, I'll be perfectly honest, these are just there just to look nice for this tutorial. If this was going to be for a proper game model, these would be modelled flat so that they could be easily rigged and then they'd be animated either via dynamics in the game or uh, by an animator. And again, I've just gone in and added a lot more crease detail into the bandana. Again, just creating edge loops and adjusting the shape. And that's pretty much all this model has been up to now. Just tweaking edge loops, adjusting the shape and using basic geometry to get the shapes that we need. There's nothing overly complicated about it. It's not like uh, something we could approach in ZBrush where it's lots of painting and sculpting and adjusting and things like that. Just using subdivision surface model, modeling techniques is ideal for a character like this. Quite stylized, quite simple, and you don't end up with millions and millions of polygons to try and play around with. So I'm going to leave this model as it is now. I may work on him a little bit more. Like I say, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about the eyes. But uh, what we're going to do is in the next video, we'll briefly look at where we move on from here. And that's taking this model into Maya and starting to think about our game model.